Hello, good morning everyone. Um, my name is Louise Powell. I'm a software engineer at the Open Source Robotics Foundation. I'm a member of the core development team for Gazebo uh, Robotics Simulator that is free and open source. Um, today I'll be showing you a little bit about what Gazebo is and uh, all the features that it has. And I like to do these presentations from within Gazebo, so you can see that in here we are inside the simulator, and this happens to be our office in Mountain View. Um, so it's just to keep you guys away. Um, so yeah, let's jump right into it. So what is Gazebo, and what's the goal of any robotic simulator, as a matter of fact? Uh, the goal is to be the best substitute for physical robots. Uh, it, a lot of people think that it involves just maybe the physics aspect and generating uh, contacts and all the dynamics that a robot would experience in the real world, but that is actually much more around it to make the, the simulator really a complete tool for people to do development on top of. So uh, I put five uh, aspects here. The first one is the physics, of course. So this takes care of everything from the dynamics of your robot, how is it going to uh, respond to the forces that it encounters, like gravity, um, and how it goes in contact with other models uh, and, and environments around it inside the simulation. There's also the sensors aspect, which many people don't realize, but simulators have to generate uh, sensor data just like the robot would uh, capture data in the real world. It would have a camera and it would see its surrounding. The simulator has to generate that data for you to for you to train your algorithms. So there is a lot of sensor data generation going on. Uh, there is, of course, the graphical user interface, which is what you guys are seeing here, um, and that is for the convenience of the developer mostly, right? For you to, uh, as the previous speaker was, was saying, that we you want to visualize and, and visually inspect what's going on uh, during your while you're training your algorithm to make sure that things are going the way you want. It's very uh, good for humans to, to interact with a simulation like this. And uh, a more non-human way is the other kinds of interfaces. And this is more uh, uh, everything that is not a graphical interface. So how do you control things programmatically inside your simulation? How do you control how the world behaves around your robot? How do you control your robot? inside the simulation. This all goes in this interfaces uh, block here. And finally, one thing that we have been doing a lot in Gazebo lately is integration with the cloud, right? Uh, simulation uses a lot of resources, so it, uh, and not everybody has uh, very powerful computers uh, at their disposal, so we're starting to use a lot of uh, cloud uh, resources like doing the simulation in the cloud or uh, hosting models and meshes and uh, plugins, everything on the cloud that you can use in your simulation. So I'm going to go in this presentation a little bit into more detail of each one of these aspects. But before that, um, I wanted to give you a, a sense of all the different things that have been done with Gazebo before, so let me show you a video. So you can see that you can simulate industrial robots, um, mobile robots and all sorts of kinds, legs or wheeled, uh, humanoid robots uh, of all sizes and numbers of degrees of freedom, swarms of robots, you can have thousands of robots flying or uh, they are like aerial robots, um, you know, fixed wings or not, underwater too, we have plugins for buoyancy and things like that, modular robots, uh, indoor or outdoor environments, um, yeah, so there's a lot of sensor generation, realistic rendering, um, integration with ROS, the robot operating system, hardware too, you can use like VR sets and all sorts of cool hardware. We host a lot of competitions and I'll go a little bit into uh, more detail later about this. It's used a lot on education and prototyping of things in the virtual world to bring it to the 3D world. I would also like to add to these things uh, since this is a conference about learning, that simulation in general is very uh, convenient for learning, especially in robotics, because the cost of learning 
uh, running some algorithm and iterating in a real robot is really high. And uh, in simulation, you can uh, do things less dangerously, right? You, you can let your robot learn, and the robot is going to hit walls and hit people, and it's fine. Um, and there's also the well, the money aspect, right? Like it's cheaper to keep this robot running in simulation, and also there's the time aspect because here you can run things faster than real time. Um, combine this with cloud, and you can run this your algorithms and. 100 computers in parallel to learn faster. So there's a lot of advantages to using simulation uh, for learning, in robotics especially. So uh, first let's talk about the physics aspect. Uh, Gazebo right now supports four physics engines. Uh, they come with Gazebo when you download it, uh, except for Dart, that you have to download Dart separately. Um, but all the other three physics engines are built into Gazebo. And uh, a lot of people ask as well, but why do you support four? Like, which one should I use? And that's the thing. Like, we support four, so you can choose which one to use, which one uh, fits your use case. Because you're going to describe your world, and you're going to write your, your control for your robot all in the same way. And at runtime, you can choose which one of the physics engines you want to use, and you can uh, iterate between them. You can try this one and try that other one. Um, so, as a general, uh, they have two main groups. These are the maximum coordinates, and these use generalized coordinates for solving the physics problem. And uh, in general, the maximum coordinates have higher performance, but they uh, are less accurate. So, these ones are good if you want to run things in real time and you want to see them happening right there, uh, which is important for example, for some competition. But if you don't mind the time and you can just leave your simulation running, maybe you want to use something that is more accurate um, but less performant. And, and, but also, each one of these physics engines have uh, their own uh, little specific details that it might be it more interesting to use one or the other. And to that end, I, I recommend if you're interested and if you think that the choice of physics engine is really going to affect how your problem is solved. I recommend you watch this presentation by Steve Peters that he did on Roscoe in Chicago, 2014, where he compares all the four physics engines and he does some benchmarking work inside the Zebo. And he uh, compares the walking of the Atlas robot by Boston Dynamics with all the four physics engines inside the Zebo and he shows some interesting results. So if you're interested, I definitely recommend this talk. Um, oh, So uh, sensors, we support a lot of different sensors in Gazebo. I put a like there are three sensors here around this little slide that is very childish. Um, so this is a laser scanner, and I on purpose like made it with low resolution so we can see like the difference between the the sensor. Uh, here there is also a camera and. Down here, it's actually a contact sensor that is reporting whenever the ball hits here. And with the interface, you can just kind of click here and see the contact sensor. You can see that very quickly, it kind of... Um, so, as the ball hits... What's that? Well, I don't know if this is very interesting to you. Ah, I don't know if you guys saw it, but the, it reported. <laughs> that the ball hit there. So I, I just want to illustrate that there is a lot of uh, a lot of different sensors inside Gazebo and it's really easy to integrate all of them and uh, use any of them as 
is unique, and it's also uh, possible for you to write your new uh, sensor and integrate it. There is a lot of sensor noise modeling. Uh, we support a few of them, and you can always write your own plugin and just introduce some sensor noise inside your simulation. Um, another big aspect is the graphical user interface, which is this whole thing that you're looking around you. Um, and this, this interface is done with Qt, which is an open source uh, user interface library, and Ogre, which is used for the rendering part of the scene. So all the buttons around are Qt, and Ogre is the, the rendering part. Um, and this graphical interface is very convenient for you to interact with your simulation, for you to introspect your simulation, and for you to create and edit the simulation. So for example, I have this little robot here, it's called a turtle bot, and you can just right click it and say let's apply force, and we choose some force here, and you're interacting with your model inside the simulation, just like that. Um, then you can introspect it, so you can right click and you can see several physical aspects of your robot. For example, the, you can make it transparent and then let's take a look at the center of mass. So you can see that um, there is a lot of mass concentrated here in the bottom, there is some mass here on the wheels, some mass here on the Microsoft Kinect sensor tied to it. Uh, so yeah, this is the whole introspection part of it. And you, you can also write your own plugins to introspect the things that you are interested in inside your simulation. Uh, like, for example, this whole presentation is being done with the plugin that I wrote for Gazebo, which allows me to just like press left and right, and it goes from one slide to the other and controls the camera angle. So it's, it's very uh, flexible like this, because you can write your own code to just be run inside Gazebo. Another thing you can do is create and edit your roles right there on the graphical interface. So for example, if you right click and you click edit model, it just takes a little bit to get them. My computer is not the best piece in the world. Um, so now we are like in the model editing mode. We can take a look at like the structure of like how the links and joints are connected in this robot, and we can go in edit each one of these pieces separately. So for example, I can do something very uh, simple. I can just like change the color of some part of the robot, just like this. If you have many robots, maybe you want to have a different color or something. And then you go, you save. No, why did I click on? Well, you believe me that if I saved it, it would be here. I just clicked it on save for some reason. So, yeah, this is the graphical interface. Um, and there's the other kinds of interfaces, right? How do you, you have your whole code that runs in your real robot and you want it to run uh, in your virtual robot as well. You don't want to change your code just for simulation. Uh, so we provide a lot of different interfaces for you. The main way to interface with Gazebo is writing C++ code either plugins that are going to run uh, in the same process inside simulation or external programs that are going to use a transport layer to talk to the simulation. Um, we offer also a lot of different command line tools for you to uh, apply forces to models or pause and play the simulation or from your command line. Uh, we At the Open Source Robotics Foundation we also have a project with JavaScript to script uh, aspects of your simulation. But I know of people in the community who have been using Python to control their simulation. Um, and finally, the ROS, which is the Robot Operating System, another of the projects that we have uh, at the Open Source Robotics Foundation, which is the full framework for controlling robots. A lot of robots out there are already integrated with ROS, and it's very seamless for you to integrate your simulation, your your simulated robot if it runs ROS inside the Zebo. So these are some of the ways, but people always find different ways to interface with the Zebo. It's always interesting to see. Another uh, interesting thing we do, I turn it to see the cloud, there it's back. Um, it's a few projects related to cloud. So we are actively working on these projects right now and they're in different stages of development. Uh, the first one is CloudSim, which is uh, running simulations in the cloud. 
So you can get, run Gazebo, the server side and the client, the visualization side separately, and you can run the server if you want on uh, uh, cloud servers, uh, Amazon servers, for example. We are using AWS for this project so far, um, and we have used other uh, vendors in the past. But you can use uh, our tools that we are building with CloudSim to run your own simulations in the cloud or <coughs> run it through us. It's a work in progress. Uh, if you have more questions, I'd be happy to talk to you after the, the talk. Um, and together with CloudSim, kind of go with this web uh, visualizer. So we have mobile and desktop web interfaces for you to just see your simulation that is running on the cloud and kind of interact with it. It's not as uh, complete as this interface that runs natively on your uh, operating system, but it allows you to at least visualize and, and insert and do something. Yeah. I was wondering, have you integrated this with Amazon Mechanical Turk? Yeah, no. Amazon Mechanical Turk? Yeah, you don't have to That's a way to have users who may not have their own computer just uh, answer basically questions on labels, data, yeah. or things like that. And I was wondering if someone tried to integrate it more of a simulation to have actually people mm -hmm. remote control simulating or something like that. But well, like, that I know of, no, but okay. that's the thing with free software. We never know what people are doing. Okay. So maybe mm -hmm. someone has, has done it before. I was oh, I'll be sure to check it out. Okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so uh, CloudSim right now, we're, we're offering it as, uh, it, it's all open source, so you can start and, and take it and run your own servers, but we're also thinking of starting to do it as a service, right, where other people can come and just uh, ask us, okay, run the simulation for me and I don't want to worry about infrastructure. And finally, uh, another project is the Prop Shop, we, and this one is more about hosting all your simulation resources online. Uh, so, for example, uh, like right now on Gazebo, if you pull this uh, site here, you can see a lot of models that are hosted in the online database. So some of these models, I don't have them in my computer yet. They're being pulled from the internet and I can just kind of copy them and place them on my simulation. But we're trying to extend this and make this much more powerful with the prop shop, which means that you can uh, upload your own models, maybe have an account, and uh, then share it with other people who you want them to see or make them public, and then people can seamlessly use these models and these plugins that you wrote and all sorts of simulation resources inside Gazebo or uh, inside CloudSim too, some simulation <coughs> that is running on the cloud. Um, so just to finish here, uh, I'd like to talk about some of the projects that we have uh, been directly involved with and that uh, used Gazebo. Probably the most famous uh, project that we have been in, which gave a lot of uh, impulse to Gazebo, was the DARPA Robotics Challenge. And this was a challenge that ran for three years uh, a while back, finished in 2015. Um, and the first phase of this robot was uh, a virtual competition inside Gazebo. So it was a competition about uh, rescue disaster uh, situations where teams would control humanoid robots to go through obstacles and open doors and turn valves. And the first uh, phase was inside simulation, inside Gazebo, and the teams that scored best would receive a real robot to compete in the real physical uh, competition later on. Uh, we've also had the Haptics project where we simulated prosthetic hands inside Gazebo. Uh, these were uh, teleoperated, so we, we integrated a lot of hardware, we integrated 3D glasses for this and, and VR sets for, to train uh, prosthetics algorithms for, for people to pick up different things and, and there was a lot of grasping involved. Uh, RoboCup 3D simulation. Gazebo was not the official uh, simulator for the RoboCup, but we have been working together with the RoboCup community to make uh, to integrate Gazebo with RoboCup and uh, make it available for teams to, to use it. So I don't know how familiar you guys are with it, but it's just uh, now robots playing soccer in a 3D environment. Um, the ARIAC competition is happening right now. Don't ask me what the acronym stands for. It's something something competition. 
in the end. Uh, <laughs> but it's uh, about uh, industrial arms in uh, like uh, industrial setting, and there there's objects coming in this conveyor belt, and the robots have to use sensors to identify these objects and pick them up very fast. I believe the first word is agile, very fast. So um, this is a competition that is happening right now in it's Evo. And finally, another competition that is happening right now is the Space Robotics Challenge hosted by NASA. And uh, this competition is about controlling this humanoid robot, which is called R5, or the Valkyrie to do some tasks that a robot would need to do in Mars. Um, so, and the finals of the competition are actually going to be run through CloudSim, so the teams are going to be uh, remotely competing uh, in the simulation that is happening far away, and we uh, are simulating the whole uh, lag in communication that it would have between Earth and Mars, and things like this. So it's a very exciting uh, competition. Um, so yeah, I don't know if that was too fast, but thank you for listening, and yeah, if you have any questions, you can ask me now, or later, I'll be around. a question that like people are always worried about how real is the simulation and if the simulation is validated for a real robot and a general rule of thumb is if it doesn't work in simulation it's probably not going to work in the real robot but if it does work in simulation it's still advised that you try it in the real robot carefully you know don't it this doesn't just transfer immediately there is a lot of different variables in a real robot that are not uh, possible to simulate or, or we haven't managed to get to this level of simulation yet. So if it doesn't work, probably I shouldn't try to run it in your real robot. But if it does work in simulation, also proceed with caution.